Edwards is here. You've seen her for years on Houston City Council. What made you decide to not run for City Council and run instead for Senate, which you're now in the primary? Well, Kimbra, we have a huge opportunity on our hands to unseat the incumbent, John Cornyn, and actually then bring about the results and the change that people are looking for in Texas. I happen to be someone who will be able to galvanize the necessary coalitions in order to win, but then, of course, most importantly for Texans, actually deliver the results we talk about with respect to health care access and economic opportunity for, for Texans. So was the attraction to do that greater than the attraction to stay in your seat on city council? It was about having the opportunity to make a big impact in the way that we need. Mm -hmm. And so those opportunities don't come uh, very often. In fact, I definitely uh, deliberated extensively on the decision, but I think ultimately having someone who could actually get the job done, meaning actually deliver access to health care, economic opportunity, looking at higher education, even deal sensibly with some of the issues pertaining to gun violence. Well, now this seems to me, if there was ever a definition of an uphill battle, this is it. <laughs> I mean, you're running against 11 other candidates. That's right. Um, in a Democratic primary, and assuming you get past the primary into a runoff and win, you'll most likely be facing incumbent John Cornyn, who has lots of money, name recognition. How you look at those odds I positively? Li I liken this to David and Goliath, but not just David and Goliath in the traditional sense, more, more or less like Malcolm Gladwell's version of the story. When we learn a little bit more past the surface and pierce, and pierce to the actual facts, we mm -hmm. learn that it's not quite the mismatch that you would seem to th think it would be on surface. For example, we learned about David, how David was an expert marksman, an athlete even. We also learn about Goliath. He was slow to move. He couldn't hardly see. And I think in this case, we've got a perfect storm brewing in terms of this election cycle. Mm -hmm. We've got an election cycle, which we would call a change election. We've got over 2.6 newly registered new voters in uh, the state of Texas since the 2016 cycle. Lots of new voters. Many of those are people of color, people under the age of 25 even. So someone who can galvanize those young people, but also communities of color and bring about those uh, persuadables, persuadable voters that Beto got into the fold so well, bring them back out to the polls. You would have the math necessary to win. I noticed that Democrats have been hopeful that they could turn the state back toward blue a little bit and they've always been hopeful but it's never really happened yeah um, this time around I guess you're feeling m more hopeful as well but as you look at that some of the the polls indicate a challenge that MJ Hagar is a clear favorite mm -hmm. the University of Houston hobby poll which came out most recently has you fifth but in a really tight race for those who can be able to get over the hump and making it to the runoff. Yes, yeah, so we, the people who are vying for that second slot, we are all within the margin of error and we've been fluctuating. Uh, one poll will show you fourth, third, twelfth, second. True. We all have right. been fluctuating throughout this entire time, so it's really just a question of whose turn is it next to uh, flip in order. And I've noticed that, by the way, just yeah. because whatever the, the hobby poll said is one thing, but those other polls, they, they were very, very close, very, very tight knit within the margin of error, so that would give you the enthusiasm to say, well, whatever. Whatever I can do, and maybe I can make a difference. What has the difference been from running in local politics to running in a statewide race? How has that been different, and how have you been able to adapt to that? Well, it's certainly logistically a little more challenging, right? So instead of me thinking about getting from the north side of town to the south side of town and how many minutes it'll take, it's about uh, a road trip that you've got to plan with multi-city multi stops. But besides for that, the issues, people are still, you know, people often ask, well, what are the people like? What's what's it like out there? People are the same everywhere. They just want you to be serious about the concerns that they have. They want to know that you'll listen and be honest, and they want to make sure that once they do give you the trust of electing you into office, that you'll actually do the things that you say you're going to do. And what is that person, when you have a chance to talk to that person, your pitch that you give them, you have like a minute to do it, what do you tell them? Well, I explain to them that I'm running because Texans deserve real results in their lives. I think too many times it's the case that you hear people making campaign promises only to see that they're under-delivered. And we have to bring about change through putting in servant leaders who can be effective while in office. It's mm -hmm. not good enough just to give a person
provocative speech, you have to accompany that, accompany that speech with an ability to affect change from within government. Sometimes that means how you bring about some, insert some civility into the conversation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's about how you know how to maneuver in politics. It's not always about who gets the credit or who's got their name on the bill. It's more about what we're able to deliver for the people that we are elected to serve. Well, I know early voting has been going on now. Of course, Super Tuesday is coming right up really quickly, so you'll have some results then. Good luck to you, and thank, thank you, you for what you do in terms of putting yourself out there in order to want to be a public servant. We need people like you. So, Well, thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much for coming and thank giving us you. your time.